Welcome to this Cinemaric Edge video tutorial. A Cinemaric Edge box is at the end a small computer. A small computer, what we are able to plug in into our machine cabinet. But is there any reason to put another computer in our cabinet? Yes, it is. Because our Cinemaric produces a lot of high frequency data. And our standard internet connection is not able to push them real time into the cloud to be analyzed. And this job is done by our Cinemaric Edge box. It reads the high frequency data of our Cinemaric, calculates the results and sends only the results to the cloud so that we are able to analyze our machines. Another benefit is that it's managed over the Mindsphere that we are able to push app updates or software updates of the firmware directly from our Mindsphere tenant to our Edge box and if we have 100, we can push it directly to 100 edge boxes without being need access to the real machine. At Siemens, we have three levels in digitalization. We have a machine level, a factory level, and a cloud level. This numeric edge is in the CNC machine. That means this is machine level. Later, we will connect colored network cables to our edge and Cinemaric, and this is our factory network. Everything what's in our factory network is factory level. And when we connect to our Mindsphere tenant uh, with my computer, then we are in cloud level. But now let's have a shorter look or a deeper look at our Cinemaric edge box. We see there are a lot of connectors and we want to have a look on it. We have two network ports. They are very important because here we have the communication over our network cables. We have there X1, P1 and X2, P1. We have three USB ports with type 2 and one USB port with the blue color. This is USB type 3. We have a 24 volt power adapter, an on off switch and we have a display port but this display port is mainly used for maintenance work, but we will have a deeper look in another video. Okay, we have the edge box here, but how it will be connected. Like you see in this slide, we need to connect this to a switch, and the switch to the Cinemaric in the X120 um, network. We need some power and we need a Cinemaric. I prepared something. The first thing is no edge computing without a Cinemaric controller. We need a switch for our X120 network. And to see something, it's very useful to have a Cinemaric panel. And to connect all them together, we will use some network cables. I will connect this and connect the power to our stuff and we will see when I finish. Okay. I connect everything. I connect the power for each device, for our Cinemary, our Hbox, our switch and our panel. And now it's time to make networking. But for networking, we need network cables. We first start with our internal network, that means X120 network. We need to connect our Hbox with X120 network to our Cinemaric switch. For this, we use the port X2P1. This will be connected also to our switch. The next connection we need is our Cinemaric. Therefore, we also use the X120 network port or a Cinemaric and connect this cable also to our switch. And last but not least, so that we are able to see something, also our panel needs to be connected to our X120. Hey, that's done. But we are not able to connect to our Cinemaric Edge box. Therefore, we need another network. This is our company network. And I use colored cables 
and this will be connected to the X130 of our cinematic and the other cable will be connected to our X1 P1 connector of our cinematic edge box. Both of these cables are connected at the other side to my company network. What else we need? Power at the end. So I will switch on the power and we will boot up Cinematic and the edge box and we will see later when they are finished to start with the onboarding process. Okay. First we need to log in into our Mindsphere tenant, therefore we use our username, which is our email address, followed by the password. After we log in, we will reach the dashboard of our Mindsphere tenant. At this time we want to add a new asset. An asset at the end is a member of the Mindsphere and therefore we use the Asset Manager. This is in the center of our dashboard, looks like a gear. After we press this asset manager, we will reach it and we can use the show asset button to show all our assets. On the left hand side, we can see all our subtenants where we can separate our locations. We will use uh, Germany in this time and the next step will be our DEX F80. Here we'll see all our already onboarded assets but we want to use the add a new asset button to add a new asset in this time our cinematic edge box. Here we have all types of assets. There are a lot of mind connects, cinematic and also the industrial edge. We can filter this by typing edge and there we will find the asset industrial edge. This is a core type, so this is a already predefined asset from the Mindsphere side. We will choose this asset and click on add. Now we need to specify some details for our new asset. First, there is a name, what we need to choose. In this time, we may choose Test Edge. Then we can add a description. Maybe later we will use this to verify what kind of asset this is. We will use only this is a Test Edge. Next thing is, we need to specify the location of our asset. At this time we will use the street of our factory and this time it's called Frauenauerer Straße 80. Followed by the zip code, the city, state or country and the region. The next step is a very important one because we need longitude and latitude to make this asset visible in our dashboard via the cards view. Most of you don't know their longitude and latitude, but therefore we can use a little trick of Google Maps. We search the location of our asset and we right click in Google Maps and we use the button what is here and down there we will find longitude and latitude so we are able to copy this and paste this in our asset manager first the longitude followed by the latitude When this is done, the next step, step is the time zone. We will use here Europe Berlin. And there are some more 
fields you can have a look on but we don't need them in this time because everything is predefined for this cinematic edge box when we are done with this we can use the button save to save this inputs what we did after we save this asset we have an overview of all informations we already input but till now this asset is still offline because we need to do some more specifications to our asset and therefore we use the connectivity tab there's a small arrow on the top we will use this to open the settings of our asset first we will need the serial number of our cinematic edge box this is printed on the label directly on the device in the right bottom corner I will show you a picture where you can find this serial number we will start typing this serial number now and the next step will be the network configuration this is a very very important part of our onboarding process and we have here two interfaces x1 p1 x2 p1 the first interface is to communicate with the internet and the second interface is our x120 network to communicate with our cinematic you can use dhcp but for a better to have a better overview about your edge boxes it is recommended to use a manual configuration and this is what we will do now we first unmark DHCP and now we start to give our edge box an IP address I have a range here of uh, 192.168.50.0 slash 23 and for our edge box we will use the IP address uh, 192.168.50.0 7. The subnet mask is 255.255.254.0. Maybe in your case it is 255, 255, 255, but I have a bigger network here in my home lab, so at this time we need to use 254. The gateway at this time is my router and has the IP address of 192.168.50.1 same situation at the DNS server 192.168.50.1 there is a possibility to define the host name in this interface but be aware that this is only possible if your current software is higher than 2.2.0 at the moment this software isn't at this software version so we will not define the host name in this situation the next step is a very important one we need to define an NTP server this is a network time protocol server this is the same like my router it is 192.168.50.1 later when we go into the firewall logging we will see why the server is so important this was for the first network interface now we go to the second one and here we also unplug DHCP and we input an IP address for our edge box this is now the internal network of the cinematic so the x120 network and this network is always 192.168.214 and it is recommended to use for the first edge box you connect to a machine the last number to be 249 but you can choose of course another number but be aware that there is more configuration at the cinematic site later subnet mask in this time this is a uh, triple 255 
0.0 because it's a network mask of 24. So we will input 255.255.255.0 because there is no internet communication on this interface so no routing we don't need a gateway and a dns server in this time there's another possibility to input a proxy in my home lab i don't use a proxy if you use a proxy you need to ask your administrator for the right input settings what we can do here okay this is done we click save but we see now that the onboarding state is still not onboarded. Now we can first control here if all settings are like we want to have. And we can't see the actual firmware because the device isn't onboarded till now. What we will do now is to create and export the onboarding key. Yes, we confirm this message. And we will get a download with an CFG file. This is a config file with the onboarding key. We save this to our PC. And this time on a USB stick. We will save this there. It is recommended to use a non so big USB stick. So a standard USB stick with 8 GB is recommended. And for all the Windows guys out there, please be aware that this format your of your USB drive isn't NTFS because on the Edgebox there is running Linux. So it's recommended to use a FAT32 format of the USB stick. So here we have this USB stick with the onboarding key on it. So we will unmount this USB and we will see back in the studio to make the onboarding process done. Okay. This works very well. We have here our USB pen with the onboarding key saved on it. And what we need to do now is plug it into a USB port on our Cinemaric Edge box. We choose one of the USB type 2, so not the blue one. Switch off the box, power on the box again. And we can see the onboarding process now in our firewall, so let's go back to my computer and we will monitor it. Okay, here we are on the terminal of my firewall and we will use the program TCP Thumb to analyze our network traffic. TCP Thumb followed by minus E for interface and this time my interface is the VMX 1.5. The host name, this is the IP address of our Cinemaric Edge box. And now we'll see all the traffic, what's going on, onto and from the Cinemaric Edge box. At the moment, there is no important traffic, but soon we will see here the first communication from the Cinemaric Edge box to our NTP server. Yeah, this is what I told you before. Now is the numeric edge box ask for the time and my NTP server answer with the current time. This was the first communication and now followed by the very important communication, communication with the AVS cloud from Amazon. This is where the Mindsphere is hosted. And here we see the answer from Mindsphere to our edge box. That means that with the onboarding process, everything works fine. And now the communication has started. And if we go back to our Mindsphere tenant and refresh the page, we will see that our Cinemaric is onboarded and online. Excellent. This works well. Okay, the onboarding process works well. We have connected our Cinemaric Edge box to our Mindsphere tenant. So we can unplug the USB pen. And the last step will be to make a firmware update of our Cinemaric Edge box. Therefore, we go back to my PC and see how we update the firmware. Okay, to start with the firmware update, we log in into our Mindsphere tenant and the dashboard will welcome us. To start with the firmware update, we use the Asset Manager followed by the button Show Assets. On the left hand side, like always, we see our subtenants. We navigate to Germany DEX F80 and choose our 
test edge box. We see the edge box is online and we can use the communication tab arrow to open the settings of our asset. Then we navigate to the tab of firmware. And here we see that we have the current firmware version 2.2.1, but there is a newer version called version 2.2.2. And in the list on the bottom, we see all available firmwares. We can mark the newest one 2.2.2, but before we start installing it, we open additional documents because here we find a PDF file with the release notes for this version. We can open this in our PDF viewer because there are some necessary important informations inside. For example, which app SDK is used for this software version. We see here that there's an app SDK 2.5.0.2.2.9 Later, we will need this information when we start with our app development. Okay, we mark this and click install. Confirm this message. And we can see the running installation jobs. When we click the button actions. And inside here, we see that the software is downloading at the moment. This will take a while. So I will speed up the video a little bit and we will see back when it's finished. While the installing is running, the box will reboot and after reboot the software update is done. You will see this in the bottom corner. Okay, we refresh again and the update is installing at the moment. And after reboot of the Cinemary Edge box, the update is done. And if we refresh the dashboard for firmware, we see that the current version is now version 2.2.2. Excellent.